Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday, March 25th edition of Living Life. You know, I don't know about you, but I really don't like tests. I really don't like exams. I know for some of you guys who have gone through different kinds of schoolings and uh, college and even grad school, you had so many tests and we dread those times when we have to have these testings. But you know, uh, testing is absolutely mandatory. It's mandatory to see if you know what you believe in or if you know uh, the things that uh, you have actually uh, studied. It, it's to really see if you know your stuff. Uh, for example, uh, I remember one of the tests that I dreaded most was a driving test. I don't know if some of you guys have uh, gone through that. I remember the first time I failed and I'm like, oh, I don't know my stuff. I don't know my material. So I had to take it again and again until I finally passed. And then they validated me. And in the same way, um, in the New Testament today, uh, we're going to uh, come to a time in the church's life when Paul is starting to check people to see and examine them to see if their faith is real. Um, let's go into that text today. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 14. This will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. I now repeat it while absent. On my return, I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the others, since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power, we will live with him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you fail the test? And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is for your perfection. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You know, I want to talk to you a little bit about the context of today's passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, there's a lot uh, going on here in this text, and I don't have time to explain to you uh, every little detail. But basically, I want to highlight uh, what's going on in verse 5. Uh, uh, Paul says here to the church in Corinth, Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? So uh, if you see the early church, many things are happening there. If you see the context of where Paul is ministering in these different cities, they've already had a history of various religions, pagan religions. Uh, they had the Greco-Roman religions and people were being saved from already established religious organizations. So they already had a certain type of theology in their mind. A, a f obviously, um, they did not believe in the true God, and they had uh, different beliefs of gods and goddesses. 
And so what they were doing was when they were coming to Christ, they didn't know how Jesus fit in the midst of all the other things that they have believed in. So there was a, a lot of mixtures of beliefs of gods and goddesses. Even as Paul presented uh, Christ, some of them did not really know who they believed. Some of them did not really know Christ. And so Paul needed to further teach. And so what he was doing was he was coming into the churches and he is uh, making sure that all the false teachings were put away and the rightful teachings of Christ were implemented. So that's what's going on in, the, in this context. And there were many who were um, kind of attacking Paul as one who didn't know what he was teaching. If you see uh, the, the, the reading of the text today, they were kind of downgrading Christ and downgrading Paul's faith as weak, if you see the text. And so there's a lot of things going on. And Paul's saying, so, no, 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 no. Those things are to actually highlight Christ's power. And so in that, he goes on to say, for those of you that are going on and living out your Christian life however you want to live it, or you are mixing Christ with other things, I want you guys to examine yourself. Are you guys making up your own religion? Or are you living in accordance to the right teachings of Christ? And not only the right teachings, but the right experience of Christ. If you see the passage here, it says, Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? So basically what he's saying is what you believe. And if we truly do believe that Jesus Christ has resurrected and he is not only with us, but even the, the scripture says that he is inside us, that he is working inside us. Is that true? Is it, Matt, is it showing? Are you bearing fruit? Is Christ really powerful inside you? And is he doing things? Is he transforming you? That's what um, Paul is talking about here. Is Christ working in your life? Is Jesus working in your life? That is the question. This is how we can really show and test that not only do we believe Jesus, but the Lord is possessing us. He is taking over us. He is allowing us to die to Himself, and Christ is now actually operating and working in our lives. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. You know, as a pastor, one of the, one of the most difficult things, not even only as a pastor, but as a Christian, is to really exemplify this thing called humility and to exemplify patience. You know, there's so many times when I am faced with difficult circumstances, um, even members. You know, I, I just have recently found out that there were some members who were not using... Um, wisdom. Uh, they were saying, speaking bad of each other. Uh, there were rumors and uh, there was gossip. And I was getting really upset at certain people. I actually just wanted to go there and exercise my authority and just do the teaching and just, you know, really discipline them. Um, I was so angry that I think if I handled this uh, the way I wanted to handle it, it would be all wrong. As I was praying through this, the Lord was saying, hey, yes, correction is absolutely needed. And he did give me wisdom to correct, but he was also showing me insight as to how to handle circumstances and situations and people. You know, if I were to do it my way, I would have just exercised um, discipline. I would have uh, probably even maybe got so angry, it, the tone of my voice would have been high. But the Lord just gave me uh, just the wisdom of being able to understand their circumstances, understand this person, and to graciously and forgivingly and lovingly, with patience, teach them why these things are wrong and how also to uh, work through uh, certain social circumstances and social issues. And so the Lord has given me that, uh, that, that ability as the Lord was working inside of me. So when I went and, and I reached out to this person and then I started teaching and I started correcting, the Lord gave me the ability and the wisdom um, to really do it the way Jesus would have, not the way I would have in the flesh. And I was just thankful to the Lord because without the Lord, I think I would just do it however the way I want to do it. And I know for sure 
Um, and in, that, in those circumstances, it would be me, it wouldn't be the Lord. So um, in those ways, uh, I would like for you to also examine yourself. Examine if Christ is working in you. Not that we're just going on and saying, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but doing whatever we want. But the fact that the Lord is working inside of you, allow Him to continue to do great things and allow Him to manifest His power as you connect with Him. So how do we then, how do we examine our lives? How do we know that Christ is working through us and it's not us just manipulating situations or doing whatever we want? How could we test that Jesus is really working through us? This is what I would love for you guys to do. In any kind of circumstance that, are, that is coming your way that you feel is very challenging or difficult, take those things, okay, and in your prayer, give it to Jesus. And, and not just give it to Him, not just saying, Lord, I got this problem here. No, it's, Lord, I have this problem. What would you like for me to do? How can I handle the situation? How can I handle these circumstances where you are moving in it? Lord, I need you. I need your wisdom. I need your help because I can't do this on my own. And just really be able to take a moment just to, really think that through and pray it through and try to listen to the Lord's voice and His guidance and allow Him to work through. And when you are at that situation, die to yourself and allow the Lord to richly bless you with the words, with the action, the, the way that He would do it. Uh, I really believe that as you really rely upon Him, that He will give you the answers, that He will guide you, and He will lead you into the ways that He would like for things to be done. So with that, let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you live in us. We thank you so much that we could examine our faith. And the way we can examine our faith is not only to learn about you, but to exercise the things that we have learned by going to you and asking you for strength and guidance that you may act powerfully through us, Lord, and that you would manifest through us and that we would see fruit. Fruit of the, the reality of the Lord's presence in our lives. So I pray your blessings upon each and every one of us today. Be with their circumstances as they're with you. You said in your word that without me that we can do nothing. And that is so true. So Lord, we rely upon you and we ask that you would show yourself strong to every person who is crying out to you and that you would use us to glorify yourself. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience. 